All right, hey, what is going on, guys? My name is Slickmoff, and I'm back again with another video. And in this one, I'm going to be reviewing Suicide Squad, David Ayer's latest installment into the DCEU. But before I get started, I just want to give a huge shout out to Will, who is a subscriber that recognized me at the premiere of Suicide Squad. I was actually quite taken aback to to uh, you know see the subscriber recognize me or this sort of thing because I've never been recognized in public. So huge shout out to Will. He is the first. That was a really cool experience, a really cool moment. Just as a YouTuber to be recognized um, IRL, as they say, uh, for the first time. So that was absolutely awesome. Thank you so much to Will for chatting with me. We talked in line about uh, the DCEU and, and a variety of other things. So that was really, really awesome. And he also tweeted me afterwards and said that he really enjoyed the film as well, just as I did. So before I get into the specifics of the review and my thoughts on the film itself, uh, you know, of course, the reviews for the film haven't been very good uh, from, from critics. They're quite negative, uh, roughly around the same place that they were for Batman v Superman at a little bit lower than um, Man of Steel, and uh, a critic that actually reviewed the film actually conceded that he believes that there may be a divide between fans and critics, uh, which I, a sort of, a sort of division, which is quite inherent to me, pretty obvious, um, in that, you know, the fan reviews for the film, roughly at 90% on, on Fandango, about four and a half out of five stars, and the critics are sitting at around, around 20%. So there certainly is a divide, and, and this critic essentially concedes that in his showing of the film, um, everybody was laughing, having a great time, and really seemed to enjoy the film, whereas he, um, didn't like it as much, and conceded that there may be a, um, sort of division there, inherent division between the fans and the critics, and I think that that's, that's nothing but obvious at this point for the DCU films in particular. So, into, you know, my thoughts on the film itself, and once again, this is a movie that has been sort of degraded in the past few weeks as well. I've seen on Twitter um, some rumors going around that essentially the film was cut. I mean, that's another thing. On top of the negative reviews, there's also been these things on Twitter. I've been seeing a lot about how uh, WB slashed the film and they cut all the Joker scenes and all these Joker scenes got cut out and, um, you know, all these sort of things, and that WB basically butchered the film, which is completely untrue, um, in that we have David Ayer who came out and said that uh, although there were Joker scenes cut from the film, there's a little bit over 10 minutes of deleted scenes in the movie, which is probably uh, around average, if not less than average, so that's nothing out of the ordinary, and that WB didn't cut it, but in fact that he did, um, and, and all of the um, decisions on the, on the editing board were his decisions and were made for the, quote, flow of the film or something to this effect. So uh, David Ayer, of course, he came out and just straight up said that the cut of the film that we saw was his cut of the film and not WB's or anything like that. In the case of Batman v Superman, though, you definitely had some WB hierarchy, um, you know, forcing Zack to make the film a little shorter. Not the case in this one. And the Joker scenes that were cut were cut by David Ayer. And, and honestly, if you, I mean, if you know anything about, like, marketing from WB's perspective, they would want to add Joker scenes. They would want want to add Batman scenes. They would want to add Harley Quinn scenes because these are the three characters that work in the film for marketing. Nobody gets excited over seeing Slipknot in the trailers, but people love seeing Joker, Harley Quinn, and Batman. So if it were up to WB, they would add Joker scenes, not subtract, but it was um, ultimately Ayer's creative decision to pull those scenes in the name of flow of the film. And I think that the movie really works extremely well. There's not a downbeat in the movie. And beyond a few nitpicks that I have, um, the film was really, really excellent. And, and, you know, getting into my review as a whole, I would say that this film did surprise me because um, I had very high expectations for it. And it didn't, you know, kind of falter to this because Batman v Superman was an interesting one for me because it was one of those movies I was always looking forward to. And then the Doomsday trailer came out and then the critics started coming out. And this was before I kind of recognized that what the critics say don't matter, uh, doesn't matter rather, grammar, what's grammar, anyway, uh, so, you know, I, I, I didn't particularly care this time around, and I don't regret it, I didn't go in thinking about the critics, I didn't go in thinking about how all these scenes were cut, and you watch the film, it's completely coherent, it's very easy to follow, the plot is very simple, and it's rewarding in that sense, it's, it's not like Batman v Superman, which is a little bit tricky to follow in the first 20 minutes, if I may say so myself, for your first viewing, um, Suicide Squad's not like that, it's a very simple premise, and it really allows, in that, it allows for the fun, it allows for for uh, this film to really bring in something new to the DCEU. And that's what's remarkable about the universe as a whole, is that uh, Man of Steel provides this inspirational sort of uh, awe-inducing sort of grandeur event that that uh, starts this arc that really begins when Kal-El ascends from Krypton and ends with Batman v Superman, which adds something completely new to the DCEU, a sort of gritty darkness. Um, 
to the to to the universe and then this one adds something completely new and of course the undertones of greenness and darkness lie throughout as is inherent throughout the majority of the DC universe whether it be comics or animated movies etc that's something that's just natural and um, exists often quite often in the DCU and here we have Suicide Squad which really um, continues that sort of thematic undertone and once again provides something completely new and this sort of dark humor and, and this humorous fun adventure that um, really uh, actually I think resembles a Marvel film much more so um, than than you know Batman v Superman let's say but it's all just done so well and really the 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 building blocks of the film established in the first 20 minutes really allows for this film to reach its culmination in the third act a very powerful final act in my personal opinion and sort of the thematic and tonal undertones established in the first 20 minutes again really I'll I'll, re I'll re emphasize the phrase culminate they reach a culmination nation in the end of the film that's very rewarding to the audience and again no spoilers in this review but um really the villain was absolutely phenomenal if you're a fan of comic books i feel as though this is the most comic booky villain that we've had in a very long time of course no spoilers as to who it is it is a spoiler um in my personal opinion of who the villain is so i don't want you to go into the film knowing anything more than i did going in and i've not seen but two trailers for the movie and i'm very glad that that is the case because this film is is incredible it really deserves it it really um basically it it, it you owe it to the movie to not see all these trailers and TV spots. If it's not too late, then then I would suggest not to. But at the same point, a lot of the um, TV spots and trailers that I've seen don't spoil the film. So that's very nice. That's very nice of WB to do so because um, Batman v Superman wasn't necessarily the same case. It wasn't too too bad, but you know this movie's really good about it. And uh, a lot of the the scenes shown in the film or, or in the trailers rather is the action stuff, which is perfectly permissible to show. So this film, basically, um, the third act to me, I thought was really strong. But at the same point, the third act really allowed me to see where some people can get derailed from the movie, where, where some people cannot like it because it's very over-the-top comic book action. Um, the villain is super comic booky. Um, it's not somebody that... That is that has this deep philosophical sort of grounding that that is super deep and complex, like uh, Lex Luthor, for example. So some people, uh, but no, vi basically critics didn't like that villain either. So I don't really know what critics are, are looking for in comic book villains. Um, but uh, you know, I guess people didn't like Baron Zemo either, who's quite a sort of cliche comic book villain. Um, and and this this is in every way a very cliche comic book villain. Uh, it's a bad it's a bad guy or girl to be a bad guy or girl. You know, there's not particularly any any reason. Again, there's no deep philosophical undertones to to the uh, the antagonism in the film. It's just a, it's a comic book villain, and that's the case in comic books ninety percent of the time. If in my personal experience, so. Um, not necessarily, okay, I'm not going to say what I was about to say, that's possibly a, a spoiler, but the villain's great. The villain is absolutely phenomenal, and the third act is, is truly remarkable. Um, the score is just so good in this movie, I don't know who composed it, but I want that person scoring Batman, I want them scoring The Flash in 2018, that's just going to be so epic to see these films coming up in the next few years. We, of course, have Justice League being scored by um, uh, Junkie XL, which is going to be a very fun sort of action-y score. Um, so that's going to be really cool. This scene, the, the, the score and the action was just epic. The cinematography was phenomenal. Just a very beautiful movie. I mean, I mean, you'll see it. There's just scenes that, that I was just awestruck. My jaw was on the floor so many times in this movie, much like it was in Batman v Superman, seeing scenes like like Superman taking, uh, you know, uh, 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 Doomsday, I forgot his name for a minute, Doomsday into space, uh, basically, I was going to say Zod, but, you know, basically Zod, Zod, Frankenstein, monster, doomsday, you know, taking that thing into space, that scene was just phenomenal with the cinematography there, and uh, the Lex Luthor scenes getting on and off the helicopter, and the, on the skyscraper scene, all of that score was just so good, and it really just, in an IMAX 3D theater, your jaw is just on the floor, and there are scenes like that here, uh, most of which with Deadshot, you'll find, which I think was really, really unique and an interesting choice. Um, and, and that's one of the things that I'm sort of taken aback by some of the, the, the negative critiques of the film. And that is that I feel as though I would have actually enjoyed the movie better than I already did. I love the movie. Don't get the wrong idea. But I would have even just – I would have had even lesser uh, – fewer nitpicks if I wasn't going into the movie as a DC Comics fan. So I picked up and, and I have critiques on things that other people don't. Uh, for example, um, well, I'm, let's just get right into it. And, and some of my nitpicks, I mean, for example, like Killer Croc, he addresses somebody as bruh in the movie. Uh, so I was like, I don't know how much I like that. I really like a Killer Croc 
Uh, this is, of course, Floyd Lawton. He's a mutant, okay? So, so you have to keep that in mind. He wasn't born a crocodile. He's not a crocodile innately, okay? So if on this side we have Waylon Jones, just the man, and on this side we have a straight-up crocodile, big monster beast. Think like the Season of Infamy Arkham Knight if you've played the Arkham games. Uh, I like my Killer Croc to be here or over. So I really like the Killer Croc in the Arkham games. I love the Killer Croc that's sort of a mix of sort of a man and a... A crocodile. This one is very much so a lot closer to here. Not exactly, but pretty pretty damn close. Uh, a lot more of a man, and, and it works well for this movie in particular. But it's awesome in in his lair. You can actually see in the trailers a little bit. He stomps, and you just sort of feel it vibrate through the the IMAX 3D theater. All that stuff was very very good, and. Um, yeah, a few nitpicks with some of the lines here and there. El Diablo was very good. A lot of the supporting minor characters. Harley Quinn, Margot Robbie stole the show for me. She was the best part of the movie by far. The Joker, again, he's not in it very much. And when he's in it, um, to me, he wasn't that great. That, just being perfectly honest here. I mean, he... Uh, for, uh, once again, I'll reemphasize that this doesn't really make or break the film because he's in it so little. Uh, some of the scenes that he's in are very, very good. Um, but to me, Jared Leto overacted the character. He over, he, he, you could tell he was acting is, is basically the point that I'm getting at. You can, you can see through the Joker and you can see Jared Leto doing his method acting and he's thinking that he's, he's doing the film good, but he's, he's, he's overacting it. That's the best way I can put it in. And, and you can just see the actor and, and that's the best way that I can really explain it. That wasn't really the case with, uh, you know, in the dark Knight. I, I wouldn't say. So I do say that I like Heath Ledger's Joker better. They're both very, um, you know, innovative takes on the on the you know classic character from the comic books. And I, I'm not saying I innately hate uh, Jared Leto's Joker. Not the case at all. Um, I really actually enjoy Leto's Joker overall. In certain scenes, they were just overacted. That's just my honest opinion. I could just see through the act of the Joker, and I could see Jared Leto, and that's that's not good. And that wasn't the case with Margot Robbie. That wasn't the case. Uh, with other characters. With that being said, those are minor nitpicks. Uh, Jared Leto's Joker overall was very good, and the the plot was phenomenal. Um, the, the story was just very good throughout. The way the flashbacks tell the story is very, very good. Overall, I give Suicide Squad a 9, 9.5 out of 10, something like that. I really, really enjoyed it. It it, um, it surprised me. I would say that I, I liked it more than I was expecting to, and DC for me is swinging 3 for 3 on Suicide Squad. So yeah, guys, overall, I absolutely love Suicide Squad. Batman v Superman and Suicide Squad are in my top three favorite movies of the year, along with probably uh, X-Men Apocalypse, I think, are my, my top three up there, probably. Yeah, I'm pretty certain that that would be my top three in there it had um you know dc really really doing big things here for the dcu cannot wait for wonder woman and justice league next year that is going to be a lot of fun so anyway guys hope you all have enjoyed the review let me know your thoughts on suicide squad in the comment section below do you agree with the critics is suicide squad a big pile of shit or is it much better than that let me know your thoughts in the comment section below my name is slick moff and we'll see you in the next one